Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Paul, and we're in the end zone now with the Super Bowl trailer for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Throughout this video, we're going to be going over all the hidden details in it, teaching you right from Wong, and also discussing our theories on who could be showing up. I think that the first trailer released at the end of No Way Home also fills in a lot of the plot too, so we'll be going over that and talking about how it teases what's in this one. If you enjoy the video, then please smash the thumbs up button, and also don't forget to subscribe for videos like this every day. Without the way, thank you for clicking this, now let's get into the multiverse of madness. Okay, so when we last saw Stephen Strange, he was the doctor making you forget, rather than being the doctor you forgot about. What? If you look at things from his perspective, he has no idea why the multiverse is cracked open, as he now no longer remembers P so, someone, someone from that movie. Now this is why he's gone to wonder who after the events of Westview has been lying low near what may or may not be Wondergore Mountain. In the first trailer we got a good look at her garden in which it seemed like she'd planted hundreds and hundreds of white trees. Going off on a big symbolism tangent, these in many ways represent the multiple worlds that we will be visiting in the movie. They're all very similar looking but if you get up close you'll notice minor differences to them. Adding to this metaphor, Strange first comes across Wanda pruning branches, which is terminology that was used in Loki when the TVA talked about shutting down offshoots of a timeline. The colour white typically represents peace, and in spiritualism, it's classed as being something that shows acceptance. The opposite to this is red, which is embodied within Wanda's red chaos magic. Now my guess is that initially Wanda will be at peace with losing her children, but after she learns variants of them exist within the multiverse that she'll attempt to go after them. This trailer confirms that Wanda will be one of the villains, and in the first teaser, we got a hint towards this when Wong was being held up by glowing red magic. I actually think that she might be the main antagonist in the movie, but there are other ones that could be popping up. We of course also have the multiple Doctor Strangers and also Baron Mordo, who we'll talk about later on in the video. Now if the darker version is indeed the same one from What If, then he in many ways will be a mirror of Wanda, as the pair both lost the person that they loved. They tried whatever they could to bring them back, including completely warping reality, and there's a lot of great things that they can do here with both of them. Wanda is somewhat a troubled character in the comics, and throughout the graphic novel House of M, she completely reorganised reality just to get her heart's desires. This created a dilemma for the X-Men and Avengers, who had to decide whether she was too dangerous to be left alive. In the end it culminated with her uttering the phrase no more mutants, which could be flipped on its head for this film so that she creates them. Now at one point in the teaser we get her discussing how she's seen as a villain for breaking reality, whereas Strange does it and he's lauded as a hero. You break the rules. Look out! I've become a hero. I do it, I become the enemy. During this section we also see several versions of Wanda, including one where she fights a mysterious person covered in a golden light. The theories online are that this is actually Captain Marvel, and that definitely makes sense. However, I actually think that this might be Monica Rambeau, who in this reality could be Captain Marvel. In the comics she did take on the Monica, and with her getting introduced in WandaVision, it would be great to see the pair going head to head. Now she might be part of a council that's featured later on, but there's multiple versions of Wanda, and it's going to be really interesting to see what they do with her. At one point she can be seen looking over a version of herself as the Scarlet Witch in Westview, which is in the same house that she built in WandaVision. If you recall the show, this was actually something that didn't exist in reality, and it was a location that Vision wanted to create for the pair to grow old in. It seems like this might be a reality where she got to live in it, which links back to our theory from earlier that she's trying to get someone else's kids. Hide your wife, hide your viz, hide your kids. Now one version is passionate towards the other, whilst the other one seems to be defeated, and we later see a version that's covered in blood, likely having massacred someone. There's also a zombie version of her looking really scary, likely about to suck the life force out of a character. There's a lot going on, and this idea of multiples is shown early on when the trailer opens with Strange discussing his dreams. The idea of eyes is given a lot of focus as we zoom in on our only wonders, but we also open with a close-up of Strange when he talks about them. I love this idea that the nightmare is reality and not the dream itself, and hey, it's a nice bit of dialogue. He says that every night he dreams the same dream, and we get a destroyed version of the Sanctum, where that's all that remains in a certain reality. Every night, I dream the same dream. Nightmare begins. Is that a face? Is that who are they? No, 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 that can't be. 
Now this Sanctorum shot is something that we saw the opposite side of in the first trailer. You can pretty much confirm from the water running along the floor that this is a setup to the shot just before he meets the evil Supreme Strange. These dreams Strange has are obviously not dreams and they're in fact glimpses into the minds of his variants across the multiverse. They're somewhat connected on a psychic level and perhaps his deaths are what triggers him to wake up at night. In these glimpses we can catch a giant red ribbon like monster and also America Chavez. Just as she's about to get ripped apart, you can see a portal open behind her in the shape of a star, which is how she travels across into other dimensions in the comics. My guess is that just before she gets killed, she travels through this and into the MCU. Also, judging by the pillar in the scene, this is somewhere that strange Christine in America travelled to at one point. Now, as for America Chavez, she's actually not from the MCU and has come across from another reality. She's something that we know frighteningly little about, but I do like her denim... Vatalin Denim. Now as for her powers and abilities, America can open multiversal portals so that she can travel across universes. She also has super strength, invulnerability and she's one of the most powerful characters in Marvel Comics. She debuted in Vengeance issue 1 as part of the Team Brigade fighting against the Young Masters of Evil. Now she was meant to appear in Spider-Man No Way Home but this was cut out due to the rescheduling in which the release order was switched so that that movie came out first. We now have concept art from the film that shows America was going to be the one that brought Toby and Andrew across, but this was switched to Ned, who's now a wizard or something. Anyway, America was also meant to appear at the Statue of Liberty at the end of the movie, and it is possible that she was the one who sent the villains and heroes back to their realities. Originally, America and her two mothers lived on a utopian parallel outside of the multiverse, which may have appeared in the first teaser. At the risk of collapse, her mothers saved the reality, but upon pulling it into the main universe, they died, leading America to run away. Through this she would find the 616 reality and become the hero that we know today. However, as of 2021, she was given a brand new origin story in the America Chavez Mad in the USA comic issue 3. In reality, the original origin was something that she made up as her mothers were from Earth and they took her and her sister to a billionaire called Mr. Gale. She and her sister had something called Edges Syndrome which Gale wanted to heal and against their parents' judgments, they let him help. Her mothers would die helping the girls escape Gale's Island when it was revealed that he exploited them. After the events of Vengeance, she would then join the Young Avengers and fight off an interdimensional parasite which showcased her multiversal powers. She would later team up with the Ultimates of Earth 616, not the edgy ones, and help Captain America and co on some of the most mind-bending cosmic adventures. Her powers and multiversal knowledge will be the key to helping Doctor Strange traverse the fractured realities and she's definitely going to be one of the most important characters in the movie. Now the Marvel Studios logo being used for the film differs slightly from the standardised one in the MCU. In the first teaser we got the Fox and Sony versions and in this trailer we get the X-Men come across in the form of Professor X. There's also what appears to be the What If logo and we do see a destroyed New York much in the same way that it was in the show. I think the Marvel Studios logo in this one does look very similar to how it did in the series, possibly hinting at characters from that coming across. Now Professor X will once more be played by Patrick Stewart and he seems to be part of a council in another reality. Judging by the Ultron bots that take him in, I'm guessing that this is one where the machine worked and it created a suit of armour around the world. The whole place seems prosperous but there's also an undertone of an almost authoritarian state due to the statues we see. They're very similar to the Hammerian Sickle, giving us the idea that there's something going on here that we aren't privy to. This scene was actually filmed in a UK museum and shout out to Chatterbox Films for sending that through. We know that the film was delayed and during this time there were extensive reshoots which are rumoured to have brought across several actors who will appear in cameo roles. John Krasinski was trending a couple of weeks ago with fans asking that he finally plays Reed Richards and this would be an awesome way to introduce Marvel's first family. When the movie was first announced, it was reported that the Illuminati would be appearing in the film and if you look at the comics, this was made up of several characters including Strange, Reed and Professor X. How that we get some beyond that including a live action version of Captain Carter from What If and also the true Quicksilver after they Ralph boned us. Having Aaron Taylor Johnson show up would also be big too as there has to be a version of him out there in the multiverse. There's really a lot of things that could happen with the movie and just in the same way that No Way Home kept us guessing, I think that this film will too. Now a huge thank you to Impractical TV for also pointing out that you can catch Captain Carter's shield in the poster so she may be part of the council as well. I think that Defender Strange will have been a part of this too and he might have died in this reality which is why there are statues for him. Seeing a character who they think has died coming in would of course arouse suspicion and this might be why they bring him before the council. 
Now in the initial trailer we encountered two new versions of Doctor Strange. This included the darker, more sinister one and Defender Strange who we could see falling through a star shaped portal. Two weeks ago a poster released with the pair on it alongside the MCU version. I think that though Defender Strange seems like a good one, he'll also be evil or well at least disagree with the MCU one. Symbolically I think that he represents order taken to an extreme whereas the darker one is the opposite of this and a complete embodiment of chaos. This is why the Sanctorum is completely messed up and hurtling through an endless void that looks like Ryan Ares mum's vagina. Now Strange somewhat lies in the middle of the pair as he's not completely chaotic but he's also not reined in enough to not cast forgetting spells just to make people stop remembering, remembering who... Who was that again? Anyway, whether the darker version is from what if remains to be seen, but this one is likely heavily along the same lines. We know from the trailer that Christine Palmer will be getting married to someone other than Steven, and much in the same way that the what if version lost her, Steven could have to come to terms with this too. She's not dead though mate, yeah move on. Now in the first trailer we could actually catch her joining Steven and America Chavez, so it does seem like she will be going with them into the multiverse. I think Defender Strange will very much just be a souped up variant who wants to bring order to everything and through him we'll see how this is just as bad as chaos. If you cast your mind back to the first trailer, you'll remember that Mordo talked about how Strange was the greatest threat to their universe. I'm sorry Stephen. I hope you understand. The greatest threat to our universe is you. Whilst it was implied that this was the strange supreme one, it could actually be the defender one too. In the graphic novel Age of Ultron we came across an alternate version of Strange called Dun 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 Defender Strange. Now we discover that he was from an alternate universe in which Hank Pym had been killed by a time travelling Wolverine so that he couldn't create Ultron. Look it was a big long winded thing. Now this led to an offshoot reality which was somewhat a fascist state that could be embodied by Defender Strange. Everything came to a head when the witch Morgan Le Fay attacked, which could be mirrored in Wanda who also possesses most of her abilities. Morgan messed up the entire reality and destroyed it just as Wolverine escaped, which is something that Wanda could end up doing and that's why we see Carmitage being attacked. I also feel that the Mordo we've seen in the teasers is actually a variant of the character and not the one from the MCU. I think this would be a great twist on things and we know from the toys that he'll be called Master Mordo instead of Baron, which may or may not be hinting towards this. Now we do see Mordo as part of the council so I think that this variant theory is pretty much confirmed. Professor X coming back is obviously the biggest part of the trailer for me and since No Way Home we know that anything is possible. We do get a character from the comics in Rintar and he's a wizard as well, possibly from another dimension or the MCU one. He's basically a giant minotaur and I can't believe I'm saying this but he might be the least interesting thing about this internet breaking teaser. It's that good, even minotaurs you're like, uh, just a minotaur. Now there's also the wizard from the first movie that Strange initially thought was the Sorcerer Supreme and it looks like they're bringing everyone back, they're bringing everyone back. Now at one point we also see America and Strange tumbling through realities. This includes one where dinosaurs still exist and it's such a cool background detail. There's also a moment where their forms turn into squares as well which was something that Thanos did to Drax in Infinity War when changing reality. Now we know that Gargantos will be attacking New York early on in the movie and this is where Strange will meet America. In case you don't know, the giant creature is actually a Namor villain, but I think for this movie they've changed it up so that he comes from another dimension instead of the ocean. Giant squids were teased throughout What If, and whilst it was initially thought to be Shuma Gorath, they may have altered things to make a Gargantos instead. The teaser has a shot of Wong fighting it, and I expect this goes down early on. Now the trailer ends with lots of action, including a zombie version of Strange, which I'm guessing could be the What If one fully powered up. Judging by the shadow entities that seem to be surrounding him, he's tapped into the dark hold and is about to destroy everything. It's a really cool shot to end on that, uh, yeah, makes this movie look crazy and I'm going to talk about my thoughts on it in just a bit. Now as for my thoughts on the trailer, I think since Spider-Man No Way Home that the marketing for these movies has changed quite a lot and that Marvel will be keeping a lot of the big reveals in it pretty close to the vest. I've heard a lot of leaks on the film that I don't want to go too deep into on a trailer breakdown, but the movie sounds like it's going to be packed with cameos and lots of major characters turning up just like No Way Home. 
that was such a big movie in terms of what it did for the genre and I think that this will knock it out of the park. There's so many directions that they can take it and it's got such a dark tone to it that it looks absolutely gripping. This seems like it's going to be unlike any other MCU movie that's come before and it's important on a number of levels as it sets up one of the big heroes as a villain whilst also bridging the gap between the Fox franchise. Dizzy spent a lot of money buying the company just to do a boner joke and it's about time they used some of the characters which I can't wait to see. Really really excited for it and obviously I'd love to hear your thoughts below. We are in competition right now and giving away 3 copies of the Doom box set on the 28th of Feb and all you have to do to be on the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on, we pick the comments at random at the end of the month and the winners of the last one are on screen right now so if that's you then message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want something else to watch then make sure you check out our breakdown of the Book of Boba Fett finale which will be linked on screen right now. We went over the full final episode, talking about all the easter eggs in it and it's definitely worth checking out right after this. Without the way, thanks for sticking through the video, I've been Paul, I'll see you in the next one. Take care, peace.